a leader, a patriot, the great philosopher of our time, all the way from Nau Maui, New York, Kama, joining us here today, as he's joined us for many, many years at Thomas Square in the celebration of our Hawaiian independence, in the celebration and reclamation of our history, of our story, one of the greatest storytellers of our time. Come close, come close. Open your ears, open your mouth. Ladies and gentlemen, bring it up to the stage, Mr. Kale Koa Kaeo, Pai Pai Lima Kako. Hey, the Hoko Atani. Hey, the Mauliola. Hey, the Hoko Atani. Hey, the Mauliola. Eola ya oe tane tu melono, oya, ho oya, eola. Ho ke tane hua vai a kua kena o kali ngatu wai, o unuwa ni uka unu ka uwa 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 uwa. Ho pai ai ke au au ka mana wai e au ro ro ta po pia, po pia pia, po pia u, po pia, po pia e, po pia u, ne to o unuwa, pa a kalani. Oh, no lila, make your hano, make a mahalo yao kua pao, ka ako ako ana mai ke ya lanui no kako, ka lahu i kanaka, aloha. First of all, I'd like to thank all the organizers who put the blood, sweat, and all of you here, especially all the ohana that have come from Kupuna to the Makua, especially to our keiki. We can come and organize, realize, so we can work. We can organize for a better future for our people. And I really have a, a lot to say, but I'll try to be very brief. La hoi hoi ea. La hoi hoi ea. It's not just a historical event that occurred that when we look back and say, wow, that was pretty neat what our kupuna were able to do in organizing in the restoration, and then the recognition following that on November 28, 1843, of our sovereignty as an independent nation state. You see, but it's not enough just to look back and to celebrate what occurred. What's more important is to understand, not just here, but in the Ao, what this really means. And we look at world history, as many of us should already understand. What our kupuna were able to do, not just in sailing to these islands, which by the way, are considered the most remote islands in the world, and that advanced society, technology, able to cross the largest ocean on this planet, to come to our islands 2,000 years ago, to set up a society where you had no homeless, like you have today. But the meaning of air really is at the heart of our identity and struggle today. So as I said, it's good that we remember, but we gotta move past the remembering to restoring. And the word restore, you gotta remember, restore is a verb. Restore isn't just a feeling. And that's one of the things I say. It's not enough just to feel good and feel happy in celebration of history. Because if that's all it's about, is feeling good, we can die feeling good without going back upon our hand, you see. Because the real question for our people is how do we organize together to become the stewards and the controllers of our, not just our land, but our destiny as a people which is the right for all peoples. We also gotta understand in this process, 
we are awakening because too much of us as a people have been not just miseducated or uneducated but have been decultured have been made to believe in fact much of the political mythologies and lies which capture our brains and souls which therefore captures our future And this miseducation really is at the core of what binds us, as the great Kwai Pula Prejean said. Don't really worry about the chains that bind your legs. Worry about the chains in your brains. Because as long as you have chains on your brains, it does not matter if you have chains on your legs, you see. It doesn't matter if they put you in a reservation, you see. Because if you live in a reservation of your mind, you are already controlled and contained, being taught to be trained to obey those masters who look at benefiting, maintaining the control, not just of us as a people, but our lands and resources. But we're in a good time. Hey, my Hawaii New York, hey, my my local my Kapo, Puka my Kamoka Kaina, Kalala ni Aina Nuumia. See the word air besides sovereignty independence means what? To rise up, to come from the pole, from below. And that's really what you see moving on, not just in Hawaii, but this is a worldwide phenomenon that's going on. And we're telling our settler masters, no more we're gonna take your control of our destiny. And that's the biggest thing of the chain of brain. We must remove from our minds that fear. We must remove from our minds the idea that somehow this is about making and pleasing their view of the world. See, that's a sickness that has been put into us that we must remove. And then the remove is through education. Ho'ona'awao, as we say in Hawaiian. And what's going on, of course, in Hawaii is we see this movement. Look at this beautiful sight we have here today. We're not here again just to celebrate. I hope we're here to organize. I hope we're here to work together. And I just want to make sure before I leave, I want to mention a couple of important um, struggles that are coming around the corner. You can say, I'm a big believer in struggle. People can talk about unity, and I always say, we'll never get unity without struggle. Unity is something we can gain through struggle. Struggle is where we prove to ourselves we stand for ourselves. We believe in ourselves. Because the Department of Interior, no U.S. President, no Governor Ige can give us our right to self-determination, our sovereignty independence. Only we can. As we understand from the great masters like Malcolm X, the oppressor will never provide the oppressed the pathway and the means for which the oppressed will free themselves. It is only the oppressed who must organize amongst themselves to fight against the oppression and the oppressors. And this is the thing we must understand. Much of the institutions that are controlled on, on behalf of Kanaka Maori are called Kanaka Maori institutions. But if you look carefully, you really realize you may have Hawaiians within those institutions, but Hawaiians do not control those particular institutions. But I'm here to tell the settler masters Get ready, master. We coming for you, master. We organizing, master. We ain't standing back, master, because we coming. We don't care what Judge Amano has to say. We don't care what Governor Ige has to say. We know that Mauna Kea belongs to our people. And we are rising. And we will no longer accept your decision to decide on our behalf what is best for us? And coming up this week, connection of course in Mauna Kea. Kuki ai Mauna! Kuki ai Mauna! Kuki ai Mauna! The last transport for Haleakla will be coming up Tuesday evening. So tomorrow night, we're gonna have a planning organizing meeting at UHMC and Maui. You have your Ohana friends on Maui. And then Tuesday night, Supposedly, with the last transport of the lands will be coming up to Halekala. And many Hawaiians tell me, but Kalikua, what if you guys cannot stop them? 
I said, perhaps we didn't stop the other two. But you see, as they say, it doesn't matter if you fall down. What's more important is that you stand up again. Yeah, my Hawaii New Year care. We will refuse. We don't bless what they do to us. We will continue to struggle against what they do to us. So this Tuesday evening, many of us will stand and do whatever's necessary to at least show, show the rest of the world that we do not accept, we do not provide consent, we do not grant this masters the right to do to us and upon our sacred lands to determine for us what is good for us. You see, see we can talk about sovereignty about the pepper. You can talk about that constitution and this constitution. But to me, air starts here. Air starts with you willingness to rise and stand and to do whatever is necessary. To speak, to preach, to teach, to organize. To do whatever is necessary. And in Hawaii, we always have that saying. Our kupuna said, Aoi kekawa, aoi koholo. When you go to war, the first lesson is learn to run. Now, on a simplistic level, you may be thinking, what the hell has that got to do with anything? The idea is that you come back to fight another day. And he comes back the next day, I come back again the next day. If I'm taken down, we will stand again the next day. And if I go down, my son will come up the next time. And if my son goes down, his son will come out the next time. But we will never refuse and give consent to the masters and the settlers to do to us what they have done. Because that time is over. Waukapo, yeah, we pakapo, waukako. No, no, later. With that, again, I just like to mahalo everybody here and say, and I just want to just say one thing. You know, this is a masterful time that's going on. We just had the Hokulea complete three years of a sail around the islands. I'm very, very proud. I cried when I saw that canoe come home, but I cried for two reasons. I gotta share. Yes, I'm proud of what our people have done and what we continue to do. But I gotta say, as I was talking back there, I was, I was eha. And I'm gonna be honest, and some of you, I see some PVS guys out there, I don't say these things in a bad way. But when I hear people talk about Malama Honua, Malama Honua, and I don't see action about Malama Hawaii, it's eha. When I see the can canoe coming in, and I see the head person who's pushing the the telescope, the TNT telescope, that's the president of the University of Hawaii, Lasby, on the canoe, smiling. I was Eha. Maybe the PDS has some kind of secret connection with Lasner. I don't know. I don't know if Lasner is in charge of the desecration of Halekla, Maunakea, and also working with the genetic modification farming and industrialization farming in Hawaii and other things over here. So for me, and because it's Mauna Kea issue coming up, I plead and I ask for those of you who know the president of the university to speak to me, talk to him, to challenge him. How dare he talk about Malama Honua? How dare when he's the headpiece of those who step upon our throats and pollute our land and desecrate our sacred sites. So at all times we speak truth. At all times we speak truth. Hawaii Aloha.